Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Newstos. And as we all probably know by this point, Xbox is going through the process of acquiring Activision Blizzard, but interestingly enough, they might actually have a chance to acquire another big studio if they'd like to pursue that option. Now, whether they do or not, that's something we'll debate here in just a little bit, so make sure to stay tuned for all of that. And then also, PlayStation was hit by a controversy as they did make a bit of a strange decision for an upcoming game that we'll be releasing later this month, so we will go over that one as well. Speaking of PlayStation, though, it is actually a pretty big week for them. Debatably, their biggest release for the PlayStation 5 yet will be releasing later this week on February 18th, being Horizon Forbidden West. Of course, it will also be releasing on a PlayStation 4 as well, but this is undoubtedly a very big release for PlayStation. Seems like it's going to be taking advantage of the PlayStation 5's power, and the, the trailers for this game looks absolutely phenomenal with its art style and its gameplay, and after the first game, Horizon Zero Dawn was just so popular, selling more than 20 million units, a lot of fans are really excited to see what happens next for the Horizon franchise. And well, the good news here is that reviews did start to roll out today, and it currently sits at an 89 overall score on Metacritic as of this recording. That is actually identical to Horizon Zero Dawn, which also received an 89 overall score. But if you actually go beyond just the score, but actually look into the reviews itself, it seems like that this game has made various improvements, which just makes it a better overall game. Now, going back for just a moment, if we take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn, this was a wonderful open world game. It had a fantastic world to explore that just immediately drew you in with that prehistoric setting combined with more of a sci-fi cybernetic future it was just absolutely fascinating but my two biggest complaints with that game was the story it didn't really hook me the way some other games have done in the past and then also i feel like the combat was it was good but i felt like it was a little let down when it comes to the ai and based off the reviews that i have heard so far it sounds like both of these have drastically improved the combat especially in terms of the melee driven combat that looks a lot better and in the stories it seems like that they have made a more coherent story this time around and if both of those are true then this really could actually be a very special release. I mean, just look how phenomenal this game looks. It, it's debatably one of the best looking games graphically on the market right now. Very excited to play this one again on February 18th. And right now it absolutely is looking like an essential release, especially on the PlayStation 5. Next up, Capcom has launched a mysterious teaser website, which is counting down to February 20th at 10 p.m. Pacific Time, 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, as to exactly what they're counting down to, that remains to be seen, but I do think that there's a couple of strong possibilities here, both of which would be incredibly exciting if it turns out to be the case. One of those would be something that we talked about just last week, and that would be a Resident Evil 4 remake reveal. Over on Fanbyte, Imran Khan reported that a Resident Evil 4 remake was being planned for early 2022, and well, guess what? It is early 2022, so maybe they could be revealing Resident Evil 4 Remake. Of course, that's just speculation, but based off of what we know, it is a possibility. Now, another game that this could possibly be, though, would be Street Fighter VI. And there's actually a few different reasons that you can come to this conclusion. The first of which is that it is Street Fighter's 35th anniversary, and yeah, there's a good chance that Capcom will be doing something for Street Fighter's anniversary, considering this is one of their most beloved IP. Another reason, though, is that, interestingly enough, there is a Street Fighter tournament going on through February 18th to the 20th. Capcom is hosting the Street Fighter Pro Tour Season Final, and this does coincide with this countdown timer. Now, could that possibly be a coincidence? Yeah, it possibly could, but it would also be the perfect way of announcing Street Fighter 6 during that tournament. So that is another reason that you could believe maybe this is a Street Fighter 6 announcement, but there's actually one more thing here, and that would be that Capcom leak that happened back in 2020. Unfortunately, Capcom was hacked, and then a lot of information about their upcoming plans was leaked online, and that included games and release dates. And well, according to that leaked document, they were planning to release Street Fighter 6 in the year of 2022. 
The thing about that leak, though, was that there was also another major game releasing in 2022, and well, guess what? That was actually Resident Evil 4 Remake. So that's kind of the reason that I'm leaning on the idea that maybe this countdown could be leading to an announcement for Resident Evil 4 Remake or possibly Street Fighter 6. We'll kind of see about all that, though. This leak could actually just be something much smaller, but the good news is that we're not going to have to wait too long for this one because, again, it will be announced on February 20th. Moving on though, let's go ahead and talk about Xbox because it sounds like they have a chance, an opportunity to acquire yet another talented and beloved studio. And this time it's actually in a place that they really need to improve on and that would be over in Japan because it sounds like Platinum Games would not be opposed to being acquired by actually Microsoft. Now, this is really interesting stuff, especially considering this is coming from the Platinum Games president and CEO at Sushi Inaba, which was interviewed by the Video Game Chronicles. And in this interview, he was asked about the consolidation of the game industry and how Microsoft acquired or is in the process of acquiring Activision Blizzard. And check out what he had to say. The most important thing for us is to have the freedom to make the games that we want to make. When I hear about the recent acquisitions, I don't think Microsoft is going to start micromanaging Activision to where they take away all their freedom. I don't think it's going to be a relationship like that. I think there's going to be a lot of mutual respect there and I think Activision will be able to continue doing what they do best. That's also what's most important for us at the end of the day, whatever form that takes for us and our company. So I would not turn anything down as long as our freedom was still respected. So based off of that statement there, Platinum Games basically just said that they're open to the idea of being acquired specifically from Microsoft as long as they can keep their freedom. And that is something that Microsoft has been offering all of their studios. Every studio that has since been acquired by Xbox as of recent, they have raved about how much creative freedom that Microsoft and Xbox has been giving them. One of Xbox's big pitches when it comes to these acquisitions is think of the game that you've always dreamed that you can make and will help make that happen. You have the creative freedom, we'll give you the budget, and that's what they've been doing with these studio acquisitions. And because of that, they've been a very attractive publisher to work for. And now you are starting to see studios across the industry put trust into that idea, including with Platinum Games here. What makes this even more interesting though is that here just recently, Recently, Platinum Games also publicly expressed a lot of interest that they want to return to Scalebound and make that game a reality. Scalebound is probably one of the most disappointing cancellations in game history. It was an ambitious game that was being made by Platinum Games exclusively for the Xbox One, and it just never came to be. Unfortunately, Xbox had to cancel that game. There were some different reasons as to why this happened, but at the end of the day, it just did not work out and they had since canceled it. The thing about that particular game, though, is that since it has been canceled, a lot of fans just never gave up hope that maybe Microsoft would eventually return to Scalebound again one day. This was an ambitious game being developed by a talented studio, and it did make a lot of progress in development. It just felt like that they could never make it past certain barriers. But here we're seeing not only Platinum Games profess that they want to work on this game again, and they're saying this very publicly, and now on top of that, they're also putting their name in the ring saying, hey, we'd be open to the idea of an acquisition. So when you put two and two together, I mean, yes, Xbox could possibly go to Platinum Games, put their best foot forward and say, hey, let's join Team Xbox. And maybe Platinum Games would actually do that after all. Now, would Xbox and Microsoft actually do that though? And that's where I'm gonna be a little skeptical here. Do I think that it would be the right move for them? Yes, absolutely. What Xbox needs is that they need more Japanese games. They need more diversity and they need creativity. And Platinum Games checks all of those boxes. Again, this is a talented studio. They've worked on games like Astral Chain, Bayonetta, Nier Automata, which I absolutely love, Wonderful 101, Metal Gear Rising. They have proven time and time again that that they can make good games. An acquisition like this would add more diversity, which is very important for something like Xbox Game Pass. The reason I'm a little hesitant on Microsoft actually buying Platinum Games, or at least right now, would actually just come down to timing. Currently, Microsoft is trying to acquire Activision Blizzard, and there's already a lot of questions with that acquisition. Something that we just saw last week is Microsoft posted a big public statement that is basically telling the regulators, hey, there's nothing to see here. We're not breaking any type of antitrust laws. 
So let's make this acquisition happen. That's basically what they did last week. So they want to make sure that acquisition gets through. And in the process of that, they might decide to just kind of cool it on other acquisitions, or at least again, until this acquisition is completed. They want to make sure that gets through regulations and by acquiring other studios, that could possibly draw some red flags. Now we'll kind of see about all that. Maybe they do try to acquire somebody else, but uh, with that acquisition going on, I, I am at the very least a little skeptical as of this moment. One thing is for certain though, with Platinum Games, which is one of the most prominent independent Japan studios right now, and then publicly stating that they'd be open to the idea of an acquisition if they can keep their creative freedom, I would not be surprised at all by the end of 2022 if we hear more about this subject, whether it's from Microsoft or a completely different publisher. Let's go ahead and talk about our final topic of the day though, as PlayStation was hit with a bit of a controversy over the weekend. And this is for a game that some of you all may not have been completely aware of, we're definitely aware of it now, would be Martha is Dead. I have actually talked about this game in the past, but it is a horror style of game, and it will be releasing later this month on February 24th. It is coming over to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, but it's not being treated the same on all platforms, or more specifically, on PlayStation. And this is all because of censorship. PlayStation has decided that some of the scenes in this game are just too much for fans to handle, and have asked the developer to modify the experience on PlayStation before it's set to release on February 24th. Now, the Xbox and PC versions of this game will remain unaffected. So if you want the original experience that the developer had intended for its players, you're going to want to buy the Xbox or PC version. Now, as for PlayStation fans that are committed to buying Martha is Dead on PlayStation, because they were asked to modify this experience late, Unfortunately, the physical version of this game will be delayed. You can still, however, buy the digital version on the 24th, so do keep that in mind. This whole decision from Sony, though, to censor Martha is Dead has fans reacting about as well as what you would have probably expected. A lot of fans are really upset about this whole situation. Martha is Dead did go through the ESRB ratings, and it was given an M for Mature, and this is a horror-based experience, so you do expect some different gore in horror-based games. You don't always expect to feel comfortable to say the least. Now, some of the scenes that are apparently looking to be modified yeah, it does sound pretty messed up, but at the same time, I can actually point to some other games out there that has some messed up and uncomfortable scenes in it, including PlayStation first party games. The Last of Us Part 2 has some pretty uncomfortable stuff happen in that game, and well, that being a first party Sony game, they didn't exactly censor that. Now, did they? Then you take a look at something like Mortal Kombat. I mean, Mortal Kombat has always been well known for some of its over the top gore and fatalities. So, I mean, there are some other games out there that are insanely brutal or can put you in uncomfortable situations. And again, I mean, based off of the things that I have seen and heard about Martha's Dead, it definitely puts you into some situations that if you're squeamish or if you don't like horror style of experiences, you're probably going to want to steer clear of that game. But there is a debate that maybe you should get the choice to make that decision for yourself. And PlayStation seems to be going against that choice here. And I think that's why a lot of people are upset about this overall situation. Let me know what you think about all of this, though. Are you upset about Sony's decision to censor Martha is Dead? Let me know in the comments below. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day, though, and one big topic that has been making the rounds as of the last couple days would be about Xbox doing Nintendo Direct-like events. So I wanted to ask you all, do you think Xbox needs their own Nintendo Direct-like event rather than relying on just one major event a year, of course, being E3? And as you can see here, most of you all are in favor of those Nintendo Direct-like events, with 70% of you saying yes, while 24% of you said no. So there you have it. It seems like you all do want more frequent info dumps when it comes to these Xbox games. And that is the thing, because we know that Xbox has a lot of games in development. They have a lot of studios based off of all the leaks that we've heard and all the teams that they have. I mean, we're talking about like 30 plus games, and that's even before 
beat Activision Blizzard acquisition. Again, they have a lot of content in development, and they could probably fill out some digital style events a little bit more often than what we see from them. They also have Xbox Game Pass where they announce like 10 to 20 games like every single month. So you could talk about these games there as well. I think it's gotten to the point that Xbox has the content that they could do some more frequent digital events like this. The question though is can they present it in a way that is fun for fans. Now, Nintendo's done a great job with the Nintendo Direct-like events, and that's kind of the staple right now. I feel like PlayStation doing State of Play, they've kind of mimicked that format. They haven't been as successful under that format, but I still think that they're on the right path. Now, as for Xbox, they did have inside Xbox there for a while, but those events was just so poorly paced with these overly long interviews and they tended to be a little bit more on the boring side. So the presentation is very important and truthfully, if they're gonna do this, just copy what Nintendo's doing. You don't have to overthink this. PlayStation copied them as well. You can do the same thing here. Take that format and just run with it. Anyways though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.